Accordion. When this humble instrument first made its way into South Texas roughly 200 years ago, those early German settlers could have never imagined the cultural revolution they were about to kick off. Before the accordion became synonymous with Tex-Mex, Norteño or Tejano, the popular regional music of the time was based on large orchestras that mimicked Europeans' influence in Mexico's capital. These large multi-instrumental bands were a sign of wealth and status. But when the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo stripped Mexico of a third of its territories, effectively abandoning those Mexicanos living north of the newly established border, practically overnight, this once prosperous population became destitute in their own land. The ensuing reign of terror perpetuated by the likes of the Texas Rangers and racist white ranchers stripped the now Mexican-American population of any remaining wealth, or land rights, or positions of power, leaving subsequent generations vulnerable to exploitative labor practices and government-sanctioned violence well into the 20th century. It was, however, in the midst of this chaotic and turbulent history that a new sound began to emerge one that more accurately reflected the experience of this new border identity. And the accordion became the vehicle that carried that movement forward. But it didn't hurt that a musician could throw the accordion over their shoulder, jump on a horse, travel to the next rancho, and provide entertainment that was engaging, but also affordable. Now, borrowing from Germanic polkas and waltzes and coupled with the Mexican corrido, a new signature and uniquely American form of musical expression began to take root. Like the Delta Blues, Conjunto music was birthed in times of strife by a people pushed to the outer margins of society. It was in many ways an act of subversion, a response to the economic stratification and specific geopolitical circumstances that is the Chicano experience. In other words, Conjunto music is the people's music, and became the soundtrack of the Mexican-American working class. Plus, I mean, who doesn't love the accordion, right? It's a magical instrument, at once familiar and yet far away, with the power to transport you to another time and place. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the show you are about to see is a construct of fact and fantasy, born of and for nuestra raza, raza de bronce, raza cosmica. The Pachuco blues reality can only be understood if you grasp its stylization. It was the secret fantasy of every abuelito living in or around the barrios of San Anto for his grandson to strap on an accordion and play a pinche polka. Mas chucote que la chingada, pos órale. <laughs>
Really now? Have you seen the boy? Was don't the and I say Werko? I know he has to get ready for Grandma's party. I swear that boy's gonna be late for his own funeral. Ah, why there you are. Was don't the andabas? Yes, I can see you were playing outside. Mira como traes esos zapatos. How many times do I have to tell you, eh? You have to take care of your things. Always look sharp. Nothing but class. Capiche? Mira, ven. I'll show you so you can learn something, eh? Siéntate ahí. Okay. ¿Ves esta cajita? I've had this box for many years. This, it has everything I need to do the job right. Because if you're not going to do the job right, then don't do it at all. Begin this. Ah, que la fregada. Have you been messing with my records? ever tell you how uh, uh, me and the boys from the barrio, uh, we used to take our shine boxes downtown. Uh, well, what do you mean you've heard this story before? Uh, uh, well, you're gonna listen to it again, okay? Now, pay attention. Cuando yo era un mocosito, mis abuelitos Ramón y Adelina Valdez would take me to see the conjuntos at Comanche Park, Rosedale, La Vita, Market Square. I would tag along with my abuelos to La Union and the VFW Hall to see Los Dos Gilbertos, Los Aguilares, Ruben Vela, Ruben Naranjo, Ángel Flores, El Mero, Nicky Snick, Ah, Nini Berrial, <laughs> and of course, El Maestro, Valerio Longoria. Que en paz descansen. I used to love to watch Abuelo as he would take Lina's hands as they would slide across the concrete dance floor. The familiarity of their embrace, their impeccable style. Mi abuelo siempre consultando y sus calcos, tú sabes, old school. <laughs> you see, my abuelo had a, a limp from an injury he suffered working in the factories up north. So his insurance would send him a new pair of calcos every year. Before long, he had a whole closet full. So many that he would even cut the grass in his stasis. And despite the calambres that he would get occasionally when the weather would change, it never stopped him. He was a hard worker all his life. And he enjoyed life. He enjoyed people. Y como le gustaba tirar chancla. <laughs> Of course, it was my abuelo who taught me to dance. He would put me on his feet and, and shuffle me around, así todo, uh, you know, estilo taquachito. Uh, when I got older, I would, uh, I would tease him by dancing with a, an exaggerated limp. Ah, he'd get so pissed. And derechate, he'd tell me, te pareces un gancho. <laughs> Ay, que mi abuelo. I was his chicle. Forever by his side. I was there in the end, too. All of us gathered around his bed. I held his hand as he took his final breaths. And as hard as it was, I knew I had to let him go. It's been nearly 10 years now. But occasionally, he still visits me in my dreams. He never says much, but he doesn't have to. I understand perfectly. I just smile back and pick up my accordion and play another polka. Vámonos. Y 
Ya no quiero que me beses ni besarte, ni mirarte ni siquiera oír tu voz. Porque supe que tenías otro amante y en Laredo ya tenías otros dos. Y te gusta mucho el baile y bailas al compás. Te vas hasta Laredo y quieres más y más. Y te gusta mucho el baile y bailas al compás. Te vas hasta Laredo y quieres más y más. Y te dejo en San Antonio Tus manitas no te las puedo quitar Hay momentos que pareces el demonio Cuando mueves la cintura pa' bailar Y te gusta mucho el baile Y bailes a compás Te vas hasta Laredo Y quieres más y más y te gusta mucho el baile Y bailes a compás Te vas hasta Laredo Y quieres más y más I was a little shit, uh, about your age. Uh, me and the boys from the barrio, we would take our shine boxes downtown to El Centro Mercantil. <laughs> Nos daban uh, five cents a shine. Okay. You better believe it, un nickle. Fíjate, en esos tiempos, uh, un nickle was a lot of money. Oh, you could buy a, a hamburger, uh, uh, still have uh, le money left over for a soda pop. Mira, sometimes, me and the boys from the barrio, we would ride our bikes allá to um, uh, Highland Park, uh, where all the gringos lived. And we would take the, uh, the blue jeans hanging from the clothes lines uh, and uh, uh, the fresh milk on the front porch. But we would take those blue jeans and sell them back in the barrio uh, and buy some pan dulce. Ahí nos sentábamos comiendo pan dulce con leche fresca de la vaca. Yes, yes, that was stealing, mijo, eh? Hey, surviving, ¿entiendes? Ay, hey, hey, not so rough, mijo. Mira, small circles like this or you're going to scuff them. Híjole. Mira, if you're not going to do the job right, then don't do it at all. Hey, when I was in the Navy during World War II, <clears throat> If you messed up on your job, they'd send you down to the uh, kitchen to peel potatoes. The big piles of papa see all the way to the ceiling. Yeah. That was grunt work. Was I scared? <laughs> Mijo, it was war, or what do you think? Many people died. Yeah, but I was uh, stationed in San Francisco. I got to see the Golden Gate Bridge, and <laughs> we, uh, we traveled all over the Philippines. And I make lots of friends from all over. Kansas City, uh, St. Louis, New York. <clears throat> hey, to tell you the truth, mira, I was more scared coming back from the war that grandma would find out that Lina was pregnant. <laughs> Nothing, Lina. <laughs> What did I do? Boss, I went to work. What do you think I did? Eh? We go to the war. And we come back here to the barrio and they still want to treat us like a bunch of dirty Mexicans. Ah, pues, mejor me voy donde hay trabajo. But me and el compadre Henry, we go up to Saginaw, Michigan. Yes. You know, when I got there, I did not have but a, a $5 bill in my pocket. But we found work the next day, uh, working in a foundry, the, the graveyard shift. <laughs> Uy, te digo, hijo de la mañana, it was colder than a witch's tip. Y nosotros sin chaleco, guantes o nada. <laughs> Oye, pero adentro de la fábrica, it was hot. Uh, tenían unos uh, furnaces que quemaban 24 hours a day. 
Pero, mira, este, eh, eh, ahí en la fábrica, we, we, we used to make these big uh, uh, steel pipes, uh, elbows, les decían. Así, grandotes de puro hierro. <laughs> hey, the, the señora that we stayed with, mira, she would make us a, a bean tacos for lunch. Yes? So, llegábamos ahí en la mañana, and we put those tacos in unos uh, uh, steam vents que tenía allí. Y ya para lunchtime, se quedaban calientitos, ¿eh? <coughs> ah, ay, esta pierna. That's right, mijo, it's going to rain. Do me a favor, grab me my medicine from the cabinet over there. ¿eh? Ah, mira. Never mind, aquí la traigo. ¿Quieres un traguito? De agua, Lina, de agua. Híjole. Hey, see how you get me in trouble? Speaking of trouble, have you been uh, practicing that song you're going to play today for Grandma? The valse Valerio taught you. Mijo, I don't understand why. Why do we take you to those lessons if you don't practice? Mira, if you're not going to do the job right, then don't do it. Ah, ah. I used to hate to have to practice when I was little. I mean, I was barely big enough to hold the damn thing. And the kids at school would make fun of me, call me Urkel, and it didn't help when my mom would dress me up in suspenders. <laughs> I guess it's different now, but back then it wasn't cool to play the accordion. I wanted to be playing outside, running around with my primos, getting nephew. But my dad and my abuelo, they had other plans. So one day, they dragged me into this noisy hall out in the south side, the Harlandale Civic Center. And there's all these students gathered around, and mostly kids but a few adults, and they're all banging away on the same damn polka, la barranca, the standard polka that every beginner student has to learn like like the initiation into the conjunto cult. <laughs> but I'll tell you, beginner students have no volume control. Ugh, so loud, just sounded awful reverberating off the walls. But then, the room falls silent, and in walks el maestro Valerio Longoria. He's got on a, a cheap polyester suit, a wide brim hat, shiny botines, He's got that thin little mustache, a million dollar smile, and that cigarette always dangling from his lips. Me vas a saludar, or are you just gonna stand there? Ven. Mira, don't be shy. Ven, ven. What's your name? Muy bien. And how old are you? Well, I was eight years old when my daddy, he bought me my first accordion. Yeah. He saved his money on layaway. Because we were farm workers. Andábamos piscando algodón allá in Harlingen, Texas. Yeah. I was eight years old when I started to learn to play allí en el rancho. Because they used to make dances in el campo. I remember they would throw a little water on the dirt, sweep it, y así nomás tenías el dance floor. Yeah. Uh, there was no electricity. No micrófonos o nada de eso. Nomás una plataforma y allí tocaba el conjunto. Por bajo sexto, tololoche y acordeón. Fíjate, no hay conjunto sin bajo sexto y acordeón. Son una pareja. ¿Ves? I was eight years old when I started to learn allí en el campo. Just by watching and listening. And before long, I started to pick up little melodías. Así como esos de Narciso Martínez, el huracán del valle. Oye, pero conjunto es more than just polcas. There's redobas, chotis, espasodobles, valses. Eh? A conjunto has to know how to play all of these styles. Mira, cuando me mandaron a Alemania during World War II, well, those Germans over there, they got a big kick out of un prieto mexicano como yo, tocando polcas, redobas y valses. ¿Te imaginas? How old are you? Ah, bueno, mira. Yo les digo a todos mis estudiantes, eh, el acordeón es muy, 
emocional. ¿Ves? Como respira. Listen to her breathe. ¿eh? Mira, to be a true músico, hay que vivir, hay que amar y sufrir. You have to have your heart broken. ¿Ves? Anyone can play the, the beer barrel polka. A ver. Fácil. Hmm? Now, it takes a true músico to play algo como esta. Now, mi propio composición. Eh? Va. Valerio made his first recording in 1942, El Polquerito, on Corona Records. Over the course of his career, he recorded hundreds of albums with dozens of labels. But like many conjunto musicians of his time, he would never see much of that money, making only $15 per recording and no royalties. For being a venerated conjunto pioneer, he worked as a janitor most of his life. It's no wonder then he was such a grumpy old man. But he would yell at you, push, pull, or hit your hand if you made a wrong note. <laughs> Honestly, he scared the shit out of me. Don't get me wrong. For all his gruffness, he was a real charmer. A ladies man. Some would even say, mujeriego. He wrote these beautiful boleros, these heart-wrenching love songs with all the tenderness and vulnerability that un macho can only safely express through his music. After he died, it took the community nearly two years to raise the money to put a grave on his tombstone. <laughs> For being such a, a conjunto pioneer, he, he died a pauper with little more than a, a fading legacy to his name. It's, it's, I can almost hear him say, you know, now after all of these posthumous awards and recognitions, oh, si sí, cabrones then you should have bought more of my records when I was alive. Abuela was a big fan of Valerio. I think he got a kick out of taking me to those lessons week after week. He was so proud. On the weekends, he would take me to the old barrio he grew up in to visit his compadres and comadres. And then later, he would convince the conjuntos to let me up on stage and jam with them. It was all practice for the big event, the Conjunto Festival Student Recitals. People came from all over the world for the then week-long event. To them, it was a big deal. But to me, it felt like one big backyard pachanga. Uh, me and the other students, we'd be running around, chasing each other with water guns, and rolling down that big hill behind the main stage. Back then, it felt like all of Rosedale Park was ours. Andale, mijo, they're calling you. The lights are hot and uncomfortable. A small crowd gathers at the front of the stage. I hear random shouts of encouragement from familiar voices, but, but I'm too afraid to look for their faces. Valerio's standing above me, his sons making up the rest of the band. Suddenly, my fingers begin to move, and the conjunto kicks in. I bite my lip and flinch when I make mistakes, but no one else seems to notice. And then, and then it's over. 
And for the first time in my life, I, I experienced that explosion of gritos y aplausos. I think I've been chasing that high ever since. She's got everything I need. Oh, from her bellows to her reed. Her long arms reaching out to wrap around me. And when I push and pull her, I can feel her breathe. So I tickle her buttons and she sings for me. Yeah, cause she's my main squeeze. must admit she scratches my itch and unlike those other lovers seeking comfort in the jealous hands of others she always surrenders herself to me yeah cause she's my main squeeze As a child, I admired her from afar. Her sparkle inspiring fantasies. As if I were even ready to handle with respect the breath that is her beauty. I had not yet earned these scars of my heart. Could not fathom her profundidad. She's a, a poet, a muse, a mythical relic of power, the holy grail, faithful to the true believers. And I carry her weight on my shoulders and back, the weight of a thousand wayward lovers, el querer y la traición, la vida y la eternidad. But she is my personal ometeo, supreme balancer, cosmic grandmother. Yeah, well, she's, well, she's, well, she's a fine ass ruka. Well, she's my main squeeze. so good. <laughs> hey, you know, me and Lina, we used to run a nightclub allá in Michigan. El Salón 23. I was in charge of hiring the conjunta, conjuntos. Uh, uh, and Lina, she would work the coat check for tips. Uh, there were other clubs there uh, uh, in Milwaukee or Chicago, but, but we were the only ones in Saginaw. So I would hire musicians here from Texas. I had a Harley Gin, uh, Corpus Christi, aquí de San Antonio. <laughs> Mira, 
I would make all the musicians wear matching suits. Hey, uh, we may have been factory workers, but come the weekend, nothing but glass. <laughs> uh, we ran it like that for years. We never had any problems. Uh, well, we had a guy, uh, my compadre Willie. He worked uh, as a security guard, but he would get so pissed drunk, uh, he'd start fights in the parking lot. So, uh, we had to let him go. <laughs> hey, you think you're so smart, eh? Why do you think he was called El Salon 23? Huh? Because it was on 23rd Street. <laughs> uh, back then, uh, beer was a dime, y copitas de, de ron and coca, see, for 25 cents. Una peseta. Hey, do you know what it means to pesetear? Huh? Well, mira, in the old days, uh, you could go to a cantina and you would pay the girls a quarter to dance with you. They daban tickets. Uh, you would choose the girl you want to dance with. Y le dabas el ticket. Eh? Yeah, at the end of the night, uh, she would take those tickets and collect her pesetas. Así les decían que pues andaban peseteando. <laughs> Lina, they were not hookers. Okay, some of them were hookers. But everyone's got to make a living somehow. <laughs> What's a hooker? Ah, well, you don't need to know what that means. Mira, mira, mira. Okay, this is how you finish. It's called a spit shine. <laughs> My grandparents, like many in their generation, really came into their own after the war. When they returned from overseas, having seen the world beyond the barrio, they weren't satisfied with coming back and being treated like second-class citizens. World War II was followed by an industrial boom that gave both men and women the opportunity to work decent paying jobs, jobs with pensions and benefits. And this gave them the time and the resources to form social organizations. Now, although some of them were more politicized than others, all of them held regular dances. It's not surprising then that conjunto music, a, a phenomenon unique to the Texas-Mexico border, began to emerge along the migrant routes of the 20s and 30s in North, like cities Chicago and Milwaukee, because the music itself is a reflection of the lifestyle and work ethic of a people who struggled to create a life for themselves. And people who, despite all the odds stacked against them, through all their historical trauma, always found a reason to celebrate, deliberately creating spaces where they could reinforce their cultural values, speak in their own language, practice important rites of passage, birthdays, weddings, quinceañeras, funerals. This is the legacy that we pass down from one generation to the next through the good times and the bad. Okay, listones. Pues vámonos. Okay, mijo. Are you ready to play today at grandma's party? Ah, well, don't be nervous. I mean, she's only turning 99. I don't see what's the big deal. <laughs> hey, if I ever get that old and senile, uh, just shoot me and put me out of my misery. Huh? Uh, what, Lina? What did I say? She's senile. I, I see her uh, take the gum from underneath the tables at the restaurants uh, or the cigarette butts uh, and puts them in her nose. That's not normal. Who does this? Ah, oh, fine. I'll just drive and say nothing. Gracias a Dios. Finally. Mira, no le haces caso a tu abuelo y sus pendejadas. If you have nothing nice to say, then don't say anything at all. Uh, yes, your grandma's old. She was born in, in 1902. Imagine all the things that she has seen. Hmm? Uh, uh, the television, uh, automobile. Uh, 
hasta, uh, hasta uh, un rocket ship landing on the moon. <laughs> Mira, she was just a little girl when she came over during the Mexican Revolution. Hmm? It was her job to take the bullets to the men allá en el pueblo uh, who were fighting against the federales. Hmm? Uh, you see, my grandfather, your uh, tatarabuelo, uh, he rode with Pancho Villa see, before he was killed by the soldados and my grandmother moved the family to Floresville. <laughs> Ay, Lina. Everyone's grandfathers rode with Pancho Villa. Remoya, cállate, por favor. Uh, it's my turn. All you do is talk, talk, talk. The same old stories. Ay, Lina, why, why do you have to be so mean? Mean? Mean would have been leaving you in the barrio where I found you. Now, where was I? Ay, Floresville. Pues sí, yo nací ahí en un rancho. Mm -hmm. I remember riding on a careta all the way from San Antonio to Floresville. Ay, Dios mío. It would take a whole day to get there. So long and bumpy, ah, he would make my nalgas hurt. <laughs> Oye, but I'll tell you something and you can't repeat it. Esas caretas were full of moonshine. It's true. My tíos were bootleggers during prohibition, when liquor was illegal. Hmm? Pero luego llegaron los Texas Rangers. Y esos rinches eh, se eh, mandaron a mis tíos a federal prison. Ay, Lina. Eh, that's no secret. Everybody in the barrio knows that your tíos went to the uh, big college allá in Levensworth. ¿Y tu familia qué? Tan inocentes. That reminds me. Make sure you stay away from your good-for-nothing uncle, Ramiro. I don't want him filling your head with crazy ideas. Ah, mira, ya llegamos. Okay, you better go play for Grandma before she kills over and dies right there in front of everybody. What, Lina, what did I say? Mijo, hola. Ay, sí, 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 qué bueno, qué bueno. Ah. Sí, sí, jaló, jaló, jaló. Jaló o no jaló. Sí, qué bueno, qué bueno. Ay, Diosito Santo. Traíces tu acordeón, mi hijo. Ay, qué bonito. Qué bonito. ¿Me, me vas a tocar algo? ¿Mm? El happy birthday. Chu, 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 chu. Ah, chu. Sí, qué bueno, qué bueno. Ay. Ay yo siempre quería tocar el acordeón cuando yo era niña. Oh, mi papi me dijo que no. Que el acordeón es instrumento de hombre. Que no quería una hija así puta y cantinera. No, que las hijas deben de, de casarse, ir a iglesia, tener hijos. Puro pedo, puro pedo, pedito de perro. Ay. Ay, bueno. Sabes, yo sé cantar muchas canciones. Muchas, muchas. Pero me pregunto... ¿Quién las va a cantar cuando yo muera? ¿Quién? Grandma was Lina's mother. 
her little shotgun house sat on La Calle Golondrina, directly behind Burbank High School and just around the corner from the Blue Moon Cafe. All day long, she'd sit on her front porch, rocking back and forth, singing softly to herself with a mouth full of chicle. I remember her hands, her long fingers folding and refolding the handkerchief that she always kept in the front pocket of her apron. With all the visitors that came and went and, and the dozens upon dozens of grandchildren running around, I was never really sure she knew who I was. Suddenly I hear my tío Ramiro calling out for me to play. I, I grab my accordion and I start to play one of Grandma's favorite songs, one that she had asked me to play a dozen times before. She smiles and hums and, and rocks back and forth along to the rhythm. But then suddenly, her eyes begin to swell. She buries her face behind her handkerchief, begging for me to stop. I feel like I've done something wrong. I feel ashamed for forcing those tears. Of course, I realize now that it wasn't my fault. Nearly a century of life lay shrouded upon her shoulders. Imagine the burden of a mother who's lost most of her children, her husband, her friends. Imagine the burden of la mujer, nuestras madres queridas que han sufrido tanto por sus familias. I often wonder what distant memory had been evoked. Whose face had she seen behind the lids of those teary eyes? <laughs> so many stories I'll never hear. So much knowledge lost forever to time. Grandma passed away a few months later, just shy of her hundredth birthday. Oye, carnalito. Sí, tú, cabrón. Hey, come here. Hey. Hey, why you making grandma cry like that, huh? <laughs> you know she has health issues. Hombre, se le va a flare up su diabetes, eh? <laughs> what, now you're crying? You pee pee your pants too, or what? Me, <laughs> hey, chale con ese jale. No seas pinche chion, mocoso. We gotta toughen you up, man. Hey, this ain't fucking uh, no after school special. ¿Me entiendes, Mendes? This ain't chilly willy time. You wanna go through life, I see, scared and crying all the time. Hmm. Oye, when I was your age, I was already jamming in the cantinas with all them heavy dudes. Yeah? <laughs> Hometown boys, Ram Hereda, Little Joe y su familia. <laughs> hey, hey, you ever listen to Steve Jordan? Hmm? Now that vato was pesado. <laughs> you know, El Parche. That vato with the patch on his eye looking like. <laughs> Like some kind of Pachuco space pirate, eh? <laughs> uh, that dude, he took that accordion to a whole other level. <laughs> Straight into outer space. <laughs> what? Yeah, I jammed with all them heavy dudes, man. <laughs> We used to get down too. 
puluh juju train waktu wuuuh <laughs> Rails asia lo disonte <laughs> All night laying down tracks in the studio <clears throat> What? You don't believe me? I guess your abuelo never told you, huh? But si secreto high mighty Fuck they expect Never made it past second grade. You know, I ain't always been fucked up like this. Mm. We were picking cotton over there in New Braunfels. Those Mexicans, you know, they didn't, the Germans, they, they didn't allow Mexicans in their school. Mm. <clears throat> Not unless it was the big college. All right, shit. So I got me a, a PhD in penitentiary. Why am I not famous? I just told you, Mocoso. They locked me up. <laughs> Nine years before I saw the free world. By then, the train had left the station. I never had a chance to record my own record. Left me stuck here on the wrong side of these tracks. Getting high and getting by. Morir soñando. <laughs> Salud. Sabes que? Let me see that accordion, man. Let me play you something. <clears throat> Still got it. <laughs> Ay, no, 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 mijo. <laughs> you did nothing wrong, eh? <laughs> Your grandma, she's just old. ¿Qué te digo? <laughs> Mira, when you live that long, everything makes you cry. <laughs> now, you listen to me. You have a gift, mijo. Eh? Don't waste it. Ever. ¿Me entiendes? Oh. And promise me that you'll keep practicing. Huh? Because someday, you're going to have to play for my funeral. And I don't want you to mess up. <laughs> Come here. Hey. <laughs> Do you know why your eyes are so brown? because you're full of shit up to here. <laughs> okay, okay, Lina. Si, sí, ya nos vamos, ya nos vamos. Uh, you drive. Ves, mijo, no me voy. Me llevan.
on a Sunday in April, on a little piece of property just south of town, the Conjunto Easter Bash is about to begin. This annual gathering of the Conjunto Tribe Elders is a highly anticipated event. And every year, their numbers are fewer. As soon as church lets out, people begin to arrive lining the recently mowed field in neat rows of loaded up pickup trucks. Beneath the uh, shade of a gnarly mesquite grove, the little mogosos are running around wild-eyed and sugar high, while las señoras, tan elegantes in their long summer dresses, exchange the latest chisme between sips of ice-cold chelas and long drags from thin cigarettes. Si, sí, comadre. No, comadre. Ay, ni me digas, comadre. The men, they busy themselves unloading ice chests and barbecue pits. They neatly stack dry piles of leña while sneaking in traguitos from flasks of tequila. As the air begins to fill with the smell of smoke, wet grass, and manure, huele a rancho. Lina and Abuelo, they take a seat on the handmade benches that line three sides of the concrete dance floor. On the fourth, a trailer with four flat tires serves as a makeshift bandstand. <laughs> Bien rasquache, but effective. The conjunto already plugged in and tuned up begins to shuffle through a litany of standards. Polcas, rancheras, hirachotis, their waltz. Soon, the gritos and chanclazos are in full swing, and even the youngsters get a chance to get up on stage and show their chops off, chops off to one another. <laughs> the music continues long past sunset, never ceasing, inspiring beautiful melodies, songs like, like prayers conjured from deep within our genetic memory. Be the last time that I see my abuelo together in their element, dancing together like so many times before, cheek to cheek in an embrace that transcends their daily bickering. Lina will pass first, and abuelo less than a year later. Just long enough to celebrate 86 years of a life well lived and I'll speak at his funeral, and I will play the mournful music that he himself requested, and I will honor his memory, my grandmother's memory, and all my relations stretching back, I will remember and honor you daily. History breathes on the rancho in April. The, the trees and the soil recognize that space created by, by family and music conjunto in its purest form. And when we sing and play these melodies, we recognize that struggle of generations who try to define their own unique Americanism in an adopted country that still to this day treats Mexican like a dirty word. But our self-worth has never been determined by their perceptions of us. And our innumerable contributions to the cultural fabric of this country will inevitably be recognized through the efforts of our own self-determination. Porque aquí estamos, cabrones, y no nos vamos. Tonight, however, tonight the beer is still cold. The bajo sextos and, and the accordions are musing. And the sweet mesquite breeze will carry our stories all the way home.
Adiós muchachos, ya me voy y me resigno Contra el destino, nadie en la calle Se terminaron para mí todas las farras Mi cuerpo enfermo no resiste más <música> 